Welcome to Electron Online and now let's take a look at the dipole antenna. The dipole antenna is something that we use for radio broadcasting. You've probably seen those, those very tall antenna towers that are several hundred feet, sometimes many hundreds of feet tall. And the reason why they need to be that tall is because the length of that antenna must be somehow a fraction of the wavelength. The perfect relationship is that the length of the antenna is about half the wavelength of the radio broadcast that you're trying to broadcast. So, let's take an AM radio station. Let's say that the, uh, we look at 640 AM. The frequency, therefore, is 640,000 hertz. That's the frrequency of the radio broadcast in AM. Um, that's amplitude modulation frequency. And the speed of light, of course, is frequency times wavelength. So therefore, the wavelength of this is the speed of light divided by the frequency, which in this case would be 468.75 meters, or over 1,500 feet. Now, luckily, the length of that tower doesn't need to be equal to the wavelength. It's good enough to be equal to half the wavelength. It would be better the whole wavelength, but that would be a very big tower. Half the wavelength works just fine. We we'll still get plenty of gain that way. And so if you're going to do that, that means that the length must be half a wavelength. Half a wavelength would be 234 meters or 769 feet. So that's a pretty tall tower necessary to broadcast this particular frequency for that particular radio station. Another way of looking at it would be to say that if the frequency is 640 kilohertz, that means that the period for one particular wave is this much in seconds, 1.56 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. The distance traveled by the wave uh, for one quarter of the wave would be one quarter of the period times C, that ends up being 117.2 meters. And the length divided by 2, half the length, would be equal to the distance that the wave travels in a quarter of a period. Again, half the length would be 117 meters, which is half this distance right here. Half of this would be 117 meters, which means that half the length of the pole needs to be 117 meters. The reason for that is because at the same time that we send a positive charge in this direction, so that the positive, that the top side of the tower ends up being positively charged, and then the bottom half of the tower ends up being negatively charged. So we set a potential difference across the, uh, the antenna. We send positive charges in one direction, negative charges in the other direction. Of course, that's not really the way it works. If we send negative charges this way, then this becomes positively charged because of lack of negative charges. And so we have what we call a dipole at this, at this point. That's why this is called a dipole antenna. Positive, positively charged there and negatively charged there. So what that means is we now have an electric field that sets up, and let me use this color right here. So we have an electric field from positive to negative, like so. This tower. And then, of course, it would be the same in the other direction. And that would be, of course, in 360 degrees around the tower. So we get broadcasting signals all the way around the tower like this. So this would be the electric field set up around the tower. And of course, then the electronics of the antenna would then turn the field upside down. So that would be negative charge on top, positive charge, which means that the electric field would constantly flip back and forth, flip back and forth. And of course, that would emanate at the speed of light, which would then result in an electromagnetic wave that, of course, looks like this as it leaves the television, or in this case, the radio station. So the wave would then emanate out at the speed of light by simply flipping the polarity of your dipole antenna and electromagnetic radiation and is sent out, uh, out in all directions space at the speed of light. Another way of thinking about it, of course, is that you're constantly changing the potential difference. Of course, you're constantly changing the electric field. And when you do that, you change the electric flux. And because of that, you will also have a magnetic field that will exist around the dipole antenna like this in a circle around the antenna. We'll get into more details of that later. But at least here you can see by constantly flipping over the polarity of the electric field, you'll get an oscillating signal that then goes outward. The amount of energy then goes outward depends upon the amount of energy required to send charges up and down this antenna. The faster or the, the, the greater the potential difference, the greater the voltage, the stronger the electric field strength and therefore the more energy that gets sent out. So radio signals that you want to go farther out in space, you want a stronger signal, so you send up a stronger potential difference. A stronger potential difference means a stronger electric field. Strong electric field oscillations means a stronger signal being sent out. So that's how we generate electromagnetic radiation using dipole antennas. It's simply flipping the uh, polarity around on the antenna, positive, negative, positive, negative, like this. 
that causes the electric field to switch around, and therefore we call that electric field dis uh, disturbance going then out in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Kind of interesting the way that works, and that's how all radio broadcasting works, is basically on this particular principle, and that's how we do that.